going live. Here we go. Cool, 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 cool. Alright, I'm continuing this streaming process of illustrating um, these characters and monsters for the card game Rignar. And I'm using paint.net for all of the drawing, all the illustrations. And in this video, I am working on the ghost. Now, the ghost, I have worked out. I'm going to try to do a couple of different illustrations in this one stream. So I I do this kind of doodly stuff and I did this just in a, a default size canvas still with an 8 pixel brush but then when I bring it into my uh, my final document which I'll just do a control N um, I change my resolution to 350 And then I can put in my paper size, which I do eight and a half by 11. And then I can paste in, usually create a new layer and then paste in that little sketch. You can see the difference here. So this is the little thumbnail sketch. I'll blow it up really, really big just by dragging it out. And so for the second one, I'll be doing this guy. And I want to give myself a little bit more room because I want him to have a bit more of a flowy tail. Um, but that's what I've done for this. You can see the, the sketch there underneath. And then I've gone over it with uh, a new layer with just black ink. And now I just need some more black. I want to put a little bit more solid blacks in this so that the illustration reads very well as a black and white design in case I wanted to ever one if I just ever needed it but also if I ever wanted to release this game or at least use these illustrations for like a print and play kind of thing I don't know if I'm going to be doing that or not but At least that way I've got a very clear, solid illustration in black and white already done. Uh, and it's just part of my style anyways to have these kind of solid, heavy areas of black. See, it just kind of adds more dimension and contrast. And since I'm essentially doing a mono line um, illustration, you know, I just have one brush weight for all of the lines. No shape dynamics or size dynamics or pressure sensitivity or anything like that. Um, I just like this to look like my my Sharpie or ballpoint pen drawings that I do on paper. And this is how I do it. I simulate shadow by just drawing in and filling in with solid black areas that I want to be deeper or uh, receiving less light. And Uh, this to me is just, it's simpler than trying to worry about the, 
brush pens or or you know in the Photoshop or or the programs on the computer, shape dynamics and expensive Wacom tablets and stuff like that. I don't I don't really need any of that for this kind of illustration, so I don't use it. You see I can just draw in these these shadows, fill them in with black. I'm just switching between two tools, the brush and the fill bucket tool. I think I'm going to have that whole thing be black. as well as that. I thought this was kind of an interesting take on ghosts. I know I wanted to have a skull, uh, just really to communicate that this thing is, is undead very clearly. Um, and there's lots of different ways I could have done a, a, you know, a ghost. I didn't want it to look like a, like a sheet over, you know, over a, like a balloon, <laughs> you know, like a cutesy ghost. Um, and I didn't want it to look like some of the other undead that I have, like the zombie and the skeleton. So I didn't want to give it like hands and arms. I wanted it to look very ethereal and sort of twisting and winding. And, and so almost like if it, you took a sheet and just shredded it up and then you, you make that like some sort of ethereal energy, just like sort of twisting and wrapping around itself. Um, and then the skull sort of gives it the, the creepiness and the personality. So that's, that's my thought anyway. I'm going to see how see how it goes all right so I'm just gonna delete my sketch layer now I've got the final ink uh, I'll select that layer go to my magic wand tool select everything around the character I can hold control and add to my selection that's what I want and then I invert it control I and then hold control shift and press X and that will crop my canvas and all of my layers to the selection so now I can go to this layer I'm gonna rename it white oh by the way in paint.net we've got a little gear icon here I have been using in my other videos um, in the user interface you can change the color scheme and I've, I've had it on blue for a long time the default now is dark and so I'm gonna change it to dark and I like that a little bit better it's a little easier on the eyes um, all right, so now I can duplicate my white layer. I'm going to rename that new layer color. And this is where I'm going to do all my coloring. Now, I'm not sure how to do this. I'm going to I'm going to figure it out live on the stream here. Um, let me open up my color panel. Um, I think that I'm going to want something sort of blue and green. And I'm just going to start with a dark color and fill it in. Um, but I also know that uh, I want it to look very light and and like almost have like a, a transparent feel to it. So I guess we'll see how this goes. So um, let's, uh, let's just separate the skull first and maybe I'll make this... Um, It, it, it really doesn't matter what color I make it right now. I'm going to make sure I'm not on multiply um, on my brush setting there. Um, I'm just going to get these different pieces separated and then, and then I can tweak the color. So this is how I do it. Then I can go back in. I can press K on the keyboard that switches to my 
color picker and now I can pick up colors from the screen. It's a very different kind of ghost. All right. Um, maybe just a few of these. Like cloth like ethereal energy flapping torn wrappings will be uh, a little different colors. So what I'm doing is just outlining essentially giving myself a border so that I can use the fill bucket tool and I may have to pull my tolerance way down because these colors are very similar. There we go. That's all it needed. So that piece, maybe this piece in here. Maybe this piece. No, this is not Photoshop. This is paint.net. It's a freeware application, open source. Um, if you like it, uh, I would encourage you donating, even if it's just a little something to the project to help keep it free and open source. Um, I'm not affiliated in any way with it at all. I just I think it's a good program. I can zoom way in, grab a color, and clean up. So sort of my, my first pass is always uh, a little bit rough and, and quick. All right, I think I want to grab maybe the skull color here and do a few, a few pieces. Of this I'm staying in like sort of purples and blues. Very cool hues, and I think that I have an idea on how to color my line work once I get all the solid flat colors done in a way that's going to make this look more um, a little more intangible Okay, and then I think I'll do this piece as well. Again, I'm not 100% sure at this point what I'm going to do if, if I'm going to keep these colors or not. Um, But I'm sort of giving my way of creating selections easily, and then I can change things from there. I'll do that sometimes, and sort of you know I'll use like very obnoxious colors just to make my my selection of those areas or elements or objects or whatever really easy on myself. Um, 
because I'm, I'm using pixels here, this is not vector. And so you, you don't select objects, you select pixels or ranges of pixels. Uh, which is why using layers really comes in handy. So I've got my ink layer on a different layer than my color and then my shadows and my highlights will both go on different layers as well. So if I need to change something um, and as I'm painting in like this, you can see it, it stays underneath that line art, which is, it's just sort of like magic, as simple as it is, this whole idea of like just, you know, being able to paint and color digitally. And I think I want to make this like a tear in this piece. So in here, you're going to see the color underneath. Okay. So I know I'm, I st I'm still going to do like shading and highlighting but um, I guess maybe I should do that first or should I figure out the colors? Let me just, I'm just gonna try something. Control shift U brings up my hue and saturation. As you can see, even with my color theme on my computer, I'm feeling kind of purpley today. So right now I can, I'm kind of adjusting the hues and I'm pulling, pulling the saturation back a little bit. I don't want it to look so bright. So that's before, that's after, before, after, cool. Um, all right, we'll keep going with this. I'll create my shadow layer, double click on it. Rename it uh, shadows. Put our blending mode on multiply our opacity to 120. Click OK. And then of course I do all my shadows in purple, which is gonna be um If I change my colors later, I still use this sort of purple hue for for shadows. Because I like having a mood uh, to the to the color. The color really adds a lot of mood. And so having color in your, sh in your shadows and color in your highlights, they're not just darker values of those colors, it actually change in, changes in hue as well. So my shadows are a little cooler, leaning towards purple. And my highlights, I use like a light yellow or orange, so they're warmer. Uh, so here I'm just kind of, I'm scribbling in, much like I would just do with a, with a marker on paper kind of coloring in the shadow. Now one thing I kind of do is, is create a bit of a transition between the black lines and the, and the solid color. The other thing that I do is try to help reinforce the direction of light. Uh, so underneath the brows, I want the I want the 
the brows of the skull, you know, the sort of the, the contours of the skull. I want these to feel like that they pop out a little bit more so the eyes look a little more sunk in. And of course, I'll create a transition from this uh, cast shadow from the hood because the hood is overlapping the skull and the skull is inside of the, the hood. Except right where, here where the cheekbone of the skull pops out of the side of the, the hood. Um, I'm just using this darker tone to help give the illusion of of depth. See, sometimes just like I did with my line art, I'll give it kind of this tooth pattern on the edges of things. I, I call it a dithering. And so I can use this same the same color. I haven't changed colors. I haven't changed brush settings. Anything. I'm just on a layer that is uh, semi-transparent, and on multiply blending mode, and I'm using a. Um, a dark purple color at 100% opacity on a semi-transparent or semi-opaque layer. I hope that makes sense. And what I really like about this, this process, this technique, is how little I have to mess with tools and how much more I can see on the screen is actually getting done, getting, you know, getting accomplished. I want darker tones over my solid colors. Uh, I don't have to go hunting for, you know, in the, in like the, the color picker forever. Just create a new layer, set it on multiply. And if you wanted your shadows to lean a different way, so for example, if you wanted to do something that had a, a little brighter mood to it, um, with the way that I have this layer set up, I could choose maybe this brown. And you see it's still darker. It's still darker than, than this, this blue color that I used for the hood. But see how much different of a feeling that gives you that this shadow is warmer than the base color. This shadow is cooler than the base color. So I'll go back to my, my purple. And it is a very sort of cartoony cell style, um, you know, sort of animation looking way of shading. It's not intended to be photorealistic or have a lot of gradual changes and, you know, subtle, subtle tone variations and uh, gradient colors. I'm not, again, I'm really not. I'm not worrying about all of that. These need to read very clearly on the game table, and also, um, represent my style and and sort of how I've done things for a long time with traditional analog tools. I don't want to lose. me and my, you know, my, my tastes and my, um, my style, my art form and clean everything up and make it clinical and, and too digital and perfect looking. I think perfection is, is, is overrated. It's boring. Um, so 
so I like I like to keep things looking rough. I don't mind a little wobble in my lines. I don't, you know, I don't need to tweak the crap out of them, <laughs> and uh, you know, over clean them and stuff. I like that kind of rough. Um, hand drawn handmade look and I sort of emulate that on the computer I mean I am doing this I am doing this all by hand with a Wacom so I'm using the the Intuos 4 pen and touch uh, the small version of it uh, right here that's what it looks like with the Wacom stylus again okay, this is a few years old it's it's nothing latest greatest model or anything like that um, I also am on Windows 10 with a touch screen and so I could actually even just touch and draw in my shapes and things like that but I like the feeling which is what these Wacom tablets I think were intended to do which, which was was to try to emulate the feeling of a pen on paper. And doing this process, I really get sucked in and it just it kind of becomes like a like a meditation. I think all that is going to be in the shadow. I'll bring it all the way down here. Any, uh, any questions or comments from chat? Let me know.
again, I'm just I'm drawing in a shape of the shadow, kind of giving it just a, a border of pixels around where I want to fill in. And I'm using those thick black lines to hide the seams. And then switch to my paint bucket tool and flood fill it in. And of course, I, I'm seeing little little areas, little details where I need to go back into the color layer and clean it up. Um, but that doesn't stop me from <laughs> uh, doing what I'm doing now. Kind of helps me, you know, sort of think about This, this whole process is in is in phases it's in steps you know a quick thumbnail sketch um, a lot of times I'll do a, a more refined sketch and then take a photo of it and bring that into paint.net and do my final clean ink line work other times like for this one since it was such it's it's like such a a uh, sort of fluid organic strange illustration I, I did it right in paint.net again I started with a very very low fidelity low resolution thumbnail sketch so you know, working with these, this idea of steps and phases, you know, of my, my flat colors and then the shadow layer and then the highlight layer, it kind of helps me uh, stay focused on, you know, a, a task at a time and then I go back in and, you know, if I see something and then I can, I can go back in and clean myself, clean it up so that I'm not constantly interrupting myself. I think that's it for the shadows. I might put one in right here. I think that's good. Okay. I'll just continue on, create a new layer, double click, call this one highlights. Set our blending mode on the screen, our opacity to 120. Click OK. For this illustration, I don't know if I don't think that I want my my highlights to be warmer. In fact, I may want them to be cooler. Um, I'm going to try both and I want to show you the the difference so this is my this is on my highlight layer which is on a 120 for the opacity set on screen mode and I have a a very light blue so of course my highlights are going to look blue 
but see how the see how the color changes when it's over this color versus when it's over this color. That actually looks all really, really similar. All right, so what I will what I will show you is that's a blue a cooler highlight. This is using yellow, which is going to be a warmer highlight. There is a big difference. It's going to make the blues look more green, and the purple is actually more gray because yellow yellow is almost it's it's almost the opposite of purple. So I want the I want the highlights to just be on like the very top ridges of things, right where the light would just kind of catch the the sort of the, the the rim of the of the shape, the the area that's that's most facing the light. And um, I also. over exaggerate the highlights and the shadows adding a lot of contrast again because um, these have to be visible from across the table and easy to understand easy to read I'm already thinking that I might bring down this highlight color, bring down the, the opacity down a little bit. Let's go to let's go to 80. Yeah, I think that's a little a little bit better. And again, because this is a, on a separate layer, I can always go to the, you know, the, the hue and saturation adjustments and adjust the, the hue of the highlight after the fact. I can do, do the same thing for the shadows and, and really kind of play with it. And it would, it would, it does begin to change sort of the mood um, or the, the, the emotional tone of the illustration.
I'm putting a little bit of highlights underneath some of these marks really to help them look more like um, nicks and cuts and holes. That's looking more and more creepy, I think. I don't know, this purple's kind of growing on me. It's, uh, it's very different than sort of like your, you know, the, like the white sheet Ghostbusters kind of ghost. Or like the green, you know, just ghostly energy. I don't, I don't know. It, I just didn't want to do something that I'd seen a lot of before. And also something kind of weird.
Okay, let's zoom out a little bit and see how that's looking. Zoom back in. I think that's all the highlights done. All right, so I can go back and there's a couple of things that I might want to do. Um, I just wanted to try inverting my ink. Oh, see, that's that's kind of creepy, but I think that's too much. So I, that just I don't think that's going to work. But what I could do is above my ink layer, I'll add a layer. And I'm going to call this glow. And we're going to have a color dodge blending mode. Maybe about 100 for the opacity. And then we'll choose a very large brush. And then I'm going to maybe go with uh, one of these blues that I used, maybe a little bit more aqua or teal. I do like that yellow though. It's funny, the yellow will will lighten the the ink. Turns it a little bit more red. But the blue does not. So that's the glow layer. Let's, let's 
what it looks like. I'm gonna go back to my color layer and just maybe play with the hues and the saturation. Get an idea. I'm going to duplicate my ink layer and then color my link my ink layer. Uh, let's see here. I will make it. Um, I'll select. All of the black, and let's give it a color. I'll just fill it in. Now that's looking kind of creepy. I think I just crashed paint.net right here on the stream. Well, I'm going to try restarting and come back to this. Okay, so I figured it out. Um, I'm back. Okay, cool. Just like that? Or is this... Oh, yeah. Alright, sweet. Cool, 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 cool.
All right, <laughs> figured it out. We will continue the stream. All right, so I finished I finished this guy, and basically I just I figured out the the colors that I want, and I am going to. hide everything but my colors and my line art and I will I'll keep this document open and and reuse some of this stuff but first I need to sketch my new ghost here so I wanted to have a couple of different illustrations of the ghost and um, What I can do now is grab colors from, from this that I've worked out, you know, got all my colors the way that I want them. And rather than trying to go through all that process again, I'm just going to grab my colors from there, including my ink. And so for this illustration, unlike my other ones that use solid black for all of the line art, this one uses a dark blue and it's it just ends up being like the right kind of blue so so you're gonna see here this is this is the old this is the like my, my, my thumbnail sketch and I'm gonna bring the opacity way down and I'm doing a much higher fidelity drawing over top of it I'm going to have this droopy hood. So this is where I get to reinterpret my, my quick thumbnail sketch. I like, I like giving these ghosts, these kind of hoods. Cause it, it's a little bit of a play on sort of that, like the, This old um, like you know, getting a sheet and cutting the eyes out costume. Um, But I didn't want them to look cheesy. I want them to look really, actually, quite, quite scary. Uh, creepy. And ethereal. I like giving them just the, just the, the upper jaw. Leaving the, the lower jaw off like it's been lost to time. Erosion. And I wanted there to be something, something very congruous. Um, very physical, tangible about the ghost while also keeping it very otherworldly and ethereal and supernatural so I think that I like how these are turning out so there is a skull because I think that's creepy but they're clearly not skeletons they they're maybe a little bit more like wraiths oh um, which actually, I, I'm fine with my ghosts looking like wraiths. I think the, they can sometimes they can be interchangeable as far as concepts. All right, I'm gonna fill this whole. Th actually, leave a little bit of that there so I can start filling this in. So this is a a very dark blue rather than black. Trying to work out the the 
folds in this hood and like what what's what is going on here Again, I'm going for a look that's that's sort of like just tattered fabric. Um, that's just sort of twisting and twirling around and gives this sort of implication of just constant torment and uh, unrest. It's just like simple kind of squiggly lines I also think really help especially for the the black and white version uh, just kind of giving it 
some some sort of texture and, and again you know going for f like movement and this kind of fluid ethereal almost underwater almost like fire almost you know like just this strange moving energy And, and like having all these these layers bundled over each other. See those big areas of, in this case it's dark blue, but I just, I call it, call it solid black because it would be black if this were just like a grayscale drawing. Starting to look creepy. Kind of like almost want to give him this this like tail, um, but it's you know it's just another sort of piece of this corrupted sort of eroding, whipping, flailing. there but kind of not there <laughs> uh, shadow right in here see how that really separates those, those sort of you know pieces and layers of things all right let's hide the sketch and see where we're at I like that it's weird it's it's creepy it looks a little goopy um, like 
like slime. I don't want it to be confused for slime, and I don't think it will once it's colored. But I think the silhouette of this maybe needs a little work. So I don't want it to look like it's dripping. I want it to look like it's tattered and being whipped around. So I think I have a lot of downward things happening. And I kind of need to have more that go on the side. process. Gonna grab my lasso, my magic wand to all I mean. There's gonna be a little piece in here that is like you're looking through there, almost like an arm. Alright, invert that selection. Control Shift X. Crop everything to that selection. Go to my background here, rename this white. That's my white layer I can use for selecting everything. I can get rid of my sketch layer now. There's my white layer. We'll duplicate that, call it color. And we'll go back to our previous illustration and grab the base color I used here and fill it in. colors that I used. That colored line line art um, for stuff like this really makes it feel different, like not all there, like not quite solid. Especially when all of the other cards, all the other illustrations will have uh, solid blacks.
Grab another color, go back in here. Sometimes I'll do this in sections, especially for these bigger areas. All right, almost there. I think we can start with the shadows now. So I will create a new layer. Shadows, 120. 120 in the opacity, multiply blending mode. Grab my shadow color.
If you're just tuning in, I'm drawing a ghost. That's what this thing is. I'm zoomed way in and <clears throat> way in on it. Makes it hard to see what it is. Um, we'll just see if anybody's in the stream still. So I'm I'm just working on the shadows right now. Same way that I've been doing my other illustrations. This is the second ghost illustration. Um, and I want to have variations. I'm I'm not quite committed to having all unique cards. For example, if I if I have more than one goblin. in the game um do you know using using the same artwork for multiple cards i don't think there's anything wrong with that but i don't i don't want there to be just i don't know i like i don't want it to be just um tons of duplicates so i don't i'm not sure yet um, still working out some of those decisions, some of the criteria I want to give for myself, you know, how, how, how many drawings am I going to do? How long is this going to take? All that kind of stuff, um, may just end up being what I'm going to end up having time for. I, I, I really think this is going to be a fun game. Um, I think it's going to be something that um, people sort of coming from the D&D the &D world, the D&D genre, um, tabletop role-playing hobby will really like, but I think that it will also be a good sort of introduction to that genre for, for people who've never played a role-playing game because it it does not necessarily require anybody to to role play as in like you know acting out their character um, it is definitely more of a combat simulation at least that's where it's focused it could also potentially be a um, just a just a resource just like a a supplement to your D&D &D campaign perhaps as a as an alternative combat um alternative form of combat so you can do more role playing and then you have this very very fast paced card based dice based uh, combat role so you know it's it's more about like just enjoying combat enjoying fun moments and you know lucky rolls high powerful spells and abilities but not so many micro mechanics and not as much math those are things that i was going for in and wanting to create uh, a card game anyway just a few more Scribbles of shadow here. Ok, 
Okay, I think we're ready for highlights now. Create a new layer. Call this highlights. Put my blending mode on screen. My opacity to 100, I think, is what I did. No, I did 80. Okay, there we go. And my color that I'm going to be painting on for my highlights is this light yellow. So I'm still, even for, you know, this, this thing, which is really weird, you know, trying to draw something that's there, but not really there, sort of between worlds, otherworldly, very ethereal. Um, And yet, drawing it in this style, where you, where I have, you know, very um, distinct lines, very defined separations of color, um, basically no blending. Right, it's just solid blocks of of color, uh, with changes in tone and hue. But there's no like gradual blending of colors or gradations or anything like that happening. So it was a bit of a challenge just to kind of think through to get the result that I wanted to get the you know the the, the feeling of of something hovering, floating, dead, cold. Uh, lingering, you know, between realms. So in the game, the the ghosts they take half damage from physical attacks. So any weapon, uh, unless it is a magical weapon, will only do half damage to a ghost. The idea is that it's, you know, either phasing in and out or just only only really halfway there between dimensions and an, an, an apparition, a projection even. So it's not necessarily immortal. Because it's a fantasy world, physics doesn't have to work the same way. Um, and most of the time, at least in my, in my mind, for fantasy settings, any any presence of the supernatural or the suspension of natural order, meaning, meaning like animated dead things. Uh, or things that should have died that are still living. For me, it kind of implies that there is some sort of magic involved, whether it's necromancy or some sort of divine pact or a curse or a spell gone wrong or something, you know. There's all, all sorts of uh, mythos around like where do these things come from I don't mean in the real world I just mean although there is that that speculation as well with house hunters or I mean ghost hunters you know legends of haunted houses 
all that kind of stuff. But mostly for the illustration, I just wanted to get the, the, the idea across that it's, it's there, but not really all there. And it's sort of floating and hovering and doesn't really have solid appendages or, or even necessarily a body. Um, it's definitely something that's undead. So I gave it a skull or almost like half of a skull for a head. And then this like flowing cloak, rags, sheet thing that's just sort of ripped up and is, it is like part of its body. It is its body. If it has a body, it's just constantly moving and, and flowing and twisting and blowing. My highlights just on the just on the tips of, of some of these pieces. One of the other things that I think kind of influenced the design of these ghosts is old heraldric uh, banners. seen these these kinds of swooping shapes I don't know if they were supposed to be floral or or cloth like flags or leaves but they have these these kind of interesting shapes that to me just they look like like tattered just rags of of what might be left of a flag or banner that's just been ripped to shreds by unceasing winds and it makes me think well you know what that that could work for a ghost because if they're like stuck between these dimensions or realms that must be like torture that must be a kind of torment even for a creature i don't know if you could feel sorry for a ghost who's trying to kill you but to give them some kind of You know, reason for being there and reason for reason for not being happy and attacking adventurers who may just be trying to help somebody else what's this ghost have to do with it right so again nothing necessarily needed for the illustration or to play the game but that's where some of these design decisions I think end up coming from. All right, I think that's it. That's that's looking really creepy. All right, so to finish this off, above my ink layer, I'm gonna create a new layer. I am going to take my hardness for my brush all the way down, turn my anti-aliasing back on, go with like a 400 
pixel soft brush. This is going to be my glow layer and I'm going to turn my blending mode to color dodge, make my opacity something like 100. And now I can paint in some of this glow and I'm, I'm still using yellow, but on that color dodge, you can see it, it affects the line art, especially in a, in a very interesting way. It gets more red. And so for this drawing, it introduces some pink, pink and purples. I kind of want to make the eyes look like they're kind of glowing. All right, I think that's good before I before I wreck it, overdo it. All right, this will be my second ghost, ghost zero two. We'll save it out, and we'll also save out a PNG. And let's get that in the card. Now in, um, Google Slides, where I'm setting up the cards. Here we're looking at the zombie. Here's the other ghost that I just finished. In uh, Google Slides, you can see I've, I've also, I've made the entire illustration semi-transparent. So you can actually see the card uh, design underneath it. And that's what I that's what I was really hoping for. It almost looks like, you know, you're seeing through it. So I'm going to group all that together, duplicate this, and we're going to set up a new card, ungroup it again by replacing the illustration with our new one, Ghost O2 color. Okay, and you'll see how much uh, detail now once we start to shrink this down this uh, this illustration has and this this one's probably gonna get cropped a little bit So what I do is go to the format options and turn my transparency up. And I think I did 25 for the other one.
All right, let's try that. I like that. So we got two different ghosts. They both very much still look like ghosts. Um, and then I'll just copy and paste this one. I like that front facing skull. This one, they're both, both different and unique um, and still very easy to distinguish as ghosts. So I think that's, that's going to work well. I got a page of ghosts already set up. Ghosts zombies when they go to these you'll see how much more solid these look with the black lines goblins skeletons wolves there's the goblin illustration here's the ghost So ghosts are undead and they have the ethereal property, which means they take half damage from physical attacks. Uh, oh, so that's how long the name can get, says, whoa, that looks sick. Thank you. Thanks for watching. All right. So that's our card already set up. Our illustration done. We used paint.net for everything. I can now close this. Um, I can close this one because I only had it open for reference. So I'm going to not save it. And uh, yeah, we just used free open source software for this entire thing. This whole project is actually using open source and free software using uh, Google Slides, cloud based. Um, it's actually meant for slideshows, but I'm setting up my cards using it. So thank you guys for watching. There will be more coming for sure. Um, so uh, if you like this video, go ahead and subscribe. Make sure you like the video for a lot more coming. Uh, stay tuned. Bye for now.